much, much, much is happening. We're going to talk about the new events. Mm -hmm. Your new book has, mm -hmm. is out. Yes. And the mystery of the, of the Shemitah. Shemitah. Yes. And it's shaking Wall Street. It, it's shaking people. Mm -hmm. People who were not believers mm -hmm. have become believers. Right. Yeah, it's, it's been going forth. Actually, I first shared really here, and, yes. and the new things were here, mm -hmm. um, and it has gone forth even stronger than the Harbinger. It's been going forth no. continuously. Um, and people, we've been contacted from Wall Street, we've been contacted from people who are not believers, wow. um, who, are confirming, who are confirming from what, what they have experienced that the, you know, this is so. So it's been going, and it's actually gone to Congress too. This has been given to om almost every member of Congress. Now you're speaking again? I've been, I've been asked to, next, in April, I've been asked to speak again in, 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 on Capitol Hill, a gathering of Congress and leaders, and actually it's gonna be April 29th, which is the day that America was actually dedicated to God at Cape Henry. When that, that's the, that's the oh. first dedication God. And, and that's also about, you know, it was April 30th when Washington gave the warning at Ground Zero, you know, the whole thing at Ground Zero. Yes. So that's gonna be there um, on April 29th. And then I also, in the last two weeks, received an email asking me to speak at the United Nations. How much is happening? Right and, now, and as we're taping this broadcast, this is a, one of the weeks that are kind of outstanding in the blood moon scenario mm -hmm, mm -hmm, situation mm -hmm, and the moon. Mm -hmm. Now, God said there would be signs. Mm -hmm. Where would those signs to come from? Well, uh, he said in the heavens, that's, that's one major source of signs. So it's interesting yeah, at this, in this week, as we head towards the end of this week, um, we hit a very, very uh, fascinating convergence because what you have is, first of all, March 20th, you have the very, it's the very center day of the Shemitah, number one. It is the absolute day that marks the center of the Shemitah. That is March 20th. On that day of the center of the Shemitah, you have a solar eclipse, the darkening of the sun. On that same day, you have a super blood moon, or a super moon, which is rare. Super moon, even, even secular sor sources have been writing that this is very rare to happen. You have a super moon, you have a solar eclipse, you have the spring equinox, that's another one, on the same exact day, the center of the Shemitah. Center of the year. The it's center exact, of that year. It's, it's the, the exact equinox. center day of the Shemitah. It marks the exact center point. All those things are happening on the exact center point. And... It is also Nisan 1, which is the opening day of the sacred year of the Bible. Nisan 1 is the sacred new year. So you've got on the same day. You've got, on five, same, you've got on five, the, on, five things happening on the same day. This Friday. The center wow. of this, this Friday and Saturday. Yeah, this, the center of the Shemitah, center point, solar eclipse, spring equinox, uh, super moon, and the, the Hebrew opening, the, the opening day of the Hebrew new year, sacred year on the same day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's all we can say is wow. Is God saying something when all these things come together? It would, it would seem. Yeah. <laughs> would it? Yeah. It would seem that way. <laughs> would well, he it said there would be signs. Those are signals. They're signs yes. to you. Yes. In the heavens. Once did a, one of the mysteries called the mystery of the Makora, and that is when Jesus Messiah was really born. And everything points to Nisan 1, the same exact day. The same exact day. What? Yeah, what? Nisan was the same exact day. It's also the day in the Bible that the tabernacle was finished. The glory, you know, when they work on the tabernacle? But uh -huh. Nisan 1 is the tabernacle day and the glory and all yes. that as well. All right. Yeah. God's saying something. That's right. And when he's speaking that loud, I want to listen. That's right. yeah. I want to listen. Yeah. God is speaking to us. Yes. I mean, solar eclipse is a headline seen as judgment. I, I mean, this is not from you. You, you brought mm -hmm. us some things. But this is breaking news from uh, Israel. It Day says, event on the first day of spring estimated to happen only once every 100,000 years. <laughs> you have come to Morningside for such a time as this. <laughs> such a time as this. That's the... It says a solar eclipse coming won't be just an astronomical wonder. It will be an event that may be unprecedented in human history according to biblical experts who say it is an unmistakable sign of judgment. But do you have a comment on that, Rabbi? Well, I never heard the hundred... I mean, we, I was seeing, we were seeing all these things converge. And right. again, this is the center of the Shemitah 
I never heard the 100,000 years. That's pretty big. Yeah, I'd like that to is. see that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you think that there could be a, it could be a warning? Well, inter well, the rabbis said they well, the two things. The rabbis said that when there's an eclipse of the sun in their in their writings that yeah. that speaks of the judgment of the nations. Uh, when they saw the moon turning red, that's the judgment of Israel. Hmm. And interesting because well, in the Bible, we know the darkening of the sun is a sign of judgment. Not that every time it has to be, but you've got a lot of things happening together. And so this is the midpoint of the Shemitah. Now, this is sort of a foreshadow. Six months later, when you get to the peak time, the key time of the Shemitah, that's when you're going to have another solar eclipse, and that's where you're going to have another supermoon. Yeah. You're going to have all these things at that September. Yeah. It's almost like this is, a, this is the halfway point saying, mm -hmm. this is coming. This is... A very important day. It's a, somehow, it's a marking. I mean, we knew. I knew for a time. You know, this is going to mark the exact center of the shemitah. Could it be like but, a a gun going off on a, a beginning of a race? Could it be a beginning of something? It seems like a, it seems like a. Uh, well, it is the beginning of something. It is actually the the biblical beginning when the Lord said, "This shall be the beginning of months for you." In Exodus 12, He's speaking about this day, Nisan one, the day that all these things are coming together. So it could be the beginning of something. It's a marker. It's a marker point. And what a big marker. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. This is now time, folks. Yes. This is something we need to watch. Let's roll it, okay? Is it possible that there exists an ancient mystery that lies behind the events of modern times that determines the rise and fall of the stock market and the economy? The rise and collapse of nations, the destruction of empires and superpowers, a mystery more than 3,000 years old, and yet that determines global cataclysms, the timing of world wars, the atomic age, the Cold War, the attack of 9-11, and more. Could a mystery revealed in a Middle Eastern mountain ordain the rise of America and what may be its coming fall? Could this ancient mystery given to a nation of shepherds be so precise that it has ordained and determined the timing of the greatest collapses in Wall Street history down to the year, the month, the date, and the hours? What if we could know the future? Could there exist a mystery going back to ancient times that's been affecting, even molding our lives from the days we were born? From events of global proportions to the state of our bank accounts, our past, our present, and our future and what does it foretell concerning what is yet to come what is this mystery it's called the mystery of the Shemitah the mystery of the Shemitah unlocked and it is unlocked and this is amazing what an amazing and that's the introduction that's, that's not that's, that's, that's not the part of maybe in, in yeah, the next few yeah, days, we, we can see things. a few yes. pieces from yeah. it. It's the harbinger that this was before 9-11. I had an idea of it, but I wasn't, wasn't sure yet. So I put this one verse in the book where the, the prophet says, well, it's not for, that to, for us to say this now, but this thing is bigger. So if we want, we talk about it, we can roll a clip. We'll have, you'll see very concisely, very clearly, um, what's the last 40 years of our lives, how this has been exact, an, an exact thing. So I believe they have something of the... F and this the, is from your new movie. From, this is from The Mystery of the Shemitah Unlocked, which just came out. DVD. I haven't seen it, but I saw it a, a, a screening. But, so uh, if they have the one on the... F yeah. yeah. The four collapses. Clip two, I guess it yeah. is. Let's roll that. In the last 40 years, there have been five major turning points in the financial realm. When the stock market reaches its long-term peak, and begins a long-term collapse. The years of these turning points, these peaks, these collapses are these. 1973, 1980, 1987, 2000, 2007. Is there anything peculiar or strange about these years? The Shemitah affects the financial and economic realms and takes place on a seven-year cycle. The first and second turning point, 1973 and 1980. That's a seven-year cycle. The second and third turning point, 1980 and 1987. Another seven-year cycle. The fourth and fifth turning point, 2000 and 2007. Another seven-year cycle. The Shemitah ordains a financial nullifying to take place according to a seven-year cycle or mystery. In the past 40 years, 
every single major financial turning point has taken place according to a seven-year cycle from the preceding or following financial collapse. Beyond the seven-year cycle, do any of these five major collapses have any connection to the year of the Shemitah? The answer is yes. How many of them? Every single one of them. The year 1973 was the year of the Shemitah. The year 1980, the year of the Shemitah. The year 1987, year of the Shemitah. The year 2000, year of the Shemitah. The year 2007, the year of the Shemitah. 100% of the crashes take place, not only according to a seven-year cycle, but also according to the specific seven-year cycle ordained in the Bible, the biblical Shemitah. Wow. wow. Powerful. Yeah, powerful. powerful. That, the whole video is clear. It's so and everybody's going to yes. understand it. Understand now, the next meter right after that, what's the next one is? The next one, the next one is focuses on the year 2015, which to, is which now. is now, yes. which is oh. this this September. Would it be? We get, starts the, in it, sem, we're right hitting the hitting the exact center point. It is started in 2014, September, and then goes to September 2015, the peak period. If something is to be, then that that's the period to look for. And something. Every seven years, we've had a collapse every, of every finances. Every single, se in fact, there's more than I even put in there. Uh, you even go to the last seven cycles, 67, and you got 1994. All, every single one of them has been a collapse. Every all the way back one, every to the Great one. Depression. And if you go to the Great Depression, yeah, the Great Depression followed it. The, all the top crashes have followed this. And that's uh, all in this movie. Yes. We just took yeah. a piece of it to show you. Yeah. To give you an example, I know you don't like talking about this, but you, ta you gave us the Harbingers. God sh revealed it to you. And where you got the harbingers from the Old Testament, from Isaiah, I believe, it's, but if you read on, it says God told them to repent, told them to, but they didn't do it. Now, Rabbi, it's time. I believe that we make it clear what comes next if we don't repent. Um, what happens is that, that judgment comes on the land, destruction comes on the land. What, what the first shaking was is only a foreshadow of what comes later. So in this case, 9-11 would only be a foreshadow of what comes later. With Israel, it was a, an attack by the Assyrians that came at the beginning, and then it was a, a wipeout by the Assyrians at the end. They were destroyed, literally. So yeah, this is a warning of judgment. This is a warning that if America doesn't return and America has not returned yet, that the pattern is that shakings will continue. Greater shakings will come until the nation either comes back to God in revival or heads to judgment or that God does both. The shaking of judgment comes and there in the midst there's a remnant in revival. There are those who come back to God. That's, what, that's the point of it. God shakes, so we come back. Most of us didn't come to the Lord because, because everything was going great. Most of us came to the Lord because we were shaken. So that, if that's true for people, why isn't it true for nations? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's in God's mercy that there'll be a shaking because if there was no shaking, then I would say there, there's a chance of no hope for America. If America keeps going the way it's going without any intervention, that's the, that's the thing to be afraid of, yeah. not a shaking. Wow. The shaking is what we may need to be saved. Mm, that's good, Rabbi. God is wow. speaking... Powerful. to America to repent yes to turn back but we haven't turned back we've, we've turned we've further away rabbi yes. yeah and all this and all these things are coming to a head and in the time that we're living in right now it has never accelerated so much i was here with you also another key time it was the day of the election the last presidential the next day and that was a turning point and i said we spoke about it as a turning point and a turning point, or a tipping point, if you tip something over, once you reach that tipping point, then things accelerate. Things have accelerated since then. I mean, rapid fire. It's happening, not just happening, it's accelerating. What we're watching, this moral apostasy, this moral decay, what comes on television, all what comes from the White House, what comes from Hollywood, what, all these things are accelerating in ways we have mm -hmm. never seen and many of us have never dreamed about. Right. And yet now we're almost used to it, the next thing. Things happen That's that right. would have shocked, shocked been the greatest shock to the to someone who
someone who was an atheist, it would have been a shock. Right. Now we watch this all the time. We're watch these are the end days. Yeah. And at the same time, as we watch evil called good, we are watching good being called evil as more and more stories come out of Christians who are being driven from their jobs, driven from their livelihood, driven from their bakeries, driven from their floral shops, driven and sued and judged guilty by the state simply because they are holding true to what God said, which everyone used to hold, held to it before. So these are, these are, this is the beginning of persecution. The same civilization that calls evil good shall call good evil and that's happening at the same time so yet we need the hand of god to come upon this nation yes. and we Amen. need the hand of god and, and the thing in the mid-east all over the world in the arab countries especially the christians are being persecuted they're being driven out murdered uh, children being killed in front of their parents parents being killed in front of their children beheadings beyond anything thousands I was here one of the first times that I, I went on the plane in Branson and I said Lord you know you know you have me give him this this heavy message you know and it's heavy you know and I, and, and I said you know it's a, it's a lot and I just opened the Bible for something to read in Branson Airport I open up to son of man when I put a watchman on the wall if he does not blow that shofar that trumpet I will hold him accountable That's if the right. danger is coming you must blow the trumpet. If you see danger coming, we must be the watchmen on the wall. We have to sound the trumpet. That's the gospel. And, 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 and the message of peace, 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 where there is no peace, when the nation is so in, in danger with God and to say peace, or to say the main thing is that God will make you rich. and just God, that, that is the sin of Israel. You know, they used to follow Baal. Baal was the God of prosperity. Right. That, yeah. that, they used to merge God with Baal. Well, that's another sign of apostasy and danger, that very thing, that the, instead of focusing on the righteousness of God, focusing on mammon, and you cannot serve both. God, God can bless you, but that is not our God. Our God is not gold. Our God is the one who gave his life, which is better than gold. He gave his blood for us. So we have to be standing as, as his prophets did. They never, this is never a message that they would have embraced. And this is another sign of, you know, one of the things when we're watching in America, it's not just about America, it's about the church. Because the church could never be in, you know, America could never be in the state it's in if it, the church was being what it was supposed to be. Wow. It could not be. If we were sounding the trumpet, if we were strong, it cannot be. So that, it says something that where are all the voices? Where are the Billy Grahams? You know, you look at all the so many major ministries, and many of them, it's just, hey, God's your personal counselor. He'll make you, you know, you want to be richer, he'll do it. That is not the gospel of God. Yeah. And, and so if we were, the, we have to be the lights, and it would not be as dark as it is if we had been the light. Mm. Oh, boy. The salt now and you, the light. You, on the little piece we saw from this film, you brought us right up to uh, this year. Mm -hmm. It, and I know you're you just hesitant to predict anything, but there's a pattern here. Is, uh, there is an absolute pattern. There's no question, and it's also grown more and more intense. If you look at the last two shemitas, it's not just that a crash happens at the end, but it happens on the exact day that the Bible ordained both times. You know, 2001 and 2008. I mean, that's exact. That's exact. Now, you've given us all the way from the Great Depression, all on Shemitahs, mm -hmm. all on the, the very day. Elul 29. Elul 29, Elul 29 is one of the big days oh, yeah. and a wipeout day. And that's when, it. Yeah, 2001, greatest crash in American history on Elul 29 of the Shemitah. Next, two, uh, 2008. Greatest wipeout day in the history of, of Wall Street on the same exact day, the, the Elul 29 appointed by God. In eight, 1987, what happened, you had a solar eclipse on Elul 29 that ushered in, after that Black Monday, the worst day crash in history. Wow. Yeah. During the Great Depression, Elul 29, Tishri 1, that cutoff time, you have another a solar eclipse, and you have the, it ushers in the greatest wipeout month in history. Now we are also, we talked about this solar eclipse, and I'm, you know, but interesting because when is the next one? What's the next? The Elul. next solar eclipse comes on Elul 29, the wipeout day of the Shemitah. A what day? And that is September 13th, which is not a weekday. It's a weekend. And so, but that's where we said the very last day that the stock market is open is 9-11, 14th anniversary. Elul 29? Elul 29 is Sunday. Come on, people. Come on, people. Are you all with us? Do you agree? Is this... Too much for your brain? Oh. 